What is going on guys, welcome back. In this video today, we're going to learn how to automatically run tasks in your Flask application by scheduling them using AP Scheduler. So let us get right into it. All right, so we're going to learn in this video today how to automatically call functions on a regular basis in Flask. And we're going to do that using something called AP Scheduler, which stands for Advanced Python Scheduler, because this thing allows us to automatically run a certain piece of code on a regular basis in a certain interval, for example, every day, every six hours, every minute or something like that. And this is very useful because oftentimes in our web applications, we wanna have certain jobs or certain tasks running on a regular basis automatically in the background without requiring any user interaction. So without requiring a button press or a login or using the platform at all, we just wanna keep the server running and every six hours, for example, it uh, creates a backup or every 10 minutes it updates a log file or every day it downloads some database and updates the differences or something like this. Whatever you wanna do here uh, specifically, you can do that using AP Scheduler in Flask. And this is what we're going to do in this video today. So the first thing we wanna do is wanna open up the command line and we wanna use pip or pip3 to install Flask and also Flask underscore AP Scheduler like this. These are the two packages that we're going to need in this video today. And I'm going to show you a very simple example in this video. We're going to build a very uh, minimalistic Flask application and this Flask application will lock our CPU usage and RAM usage on a regular basis, let's say every 10 seconds, just so we see that it works and then we can do something else. We can also learn how to uh, remove certain jobs, so to stop them basically. And for that, I'm going to start by just creating a simple app py file. I'm gonna say here from Flask import Flask with capital F. I'm gonna create an app which is gonna take as a parameter underscore underscore name underscore underscore. I'm gonna say templates folder is equal to templates. And then we're gonna have a simple index route. So we're gonna say that we wanna have a route slash. It's gonna have the function index and this function is just gonna return for this, we need to import here, render template. For those of you who have never worked with Flask, I have a tutorial series. You don't need to uh, watch this video as a complete beginner. I already expect you to know what routes are and templates and how to create a Flask application. Not that it's too complicated, but uh, I'm gonna rush through this a little bit here. So we're gonna render the template index HTML, which we don't have yet. Then I'm gonna copy this. I'm gonna create a second one just so we have two. I'm gonna say other and we're gonna call this other here as well, and it's gonna be the file other HTML. Um, so I'm gonna create a directory, templates. In here, I'm gonna have a simple index file, and I'm gonna say that the title is home. Then I wanna have a heading index page, and I wanna have uh, an anchor that is pointing to uh, URL for other just so I can click back and forth between the different endpoints. And then I'm gonna copy this file and I'm gonna create other HTML. I'm gonna do the same thing, just that I'm gonna call this other, I'm gonna say other page, and here I'm gonna point to index. And that's basically it. This is the magic now in my application. I'm gonna run this of course by saying if underscore underscore name underscore underscore is equal to underscore underscore main underscore underscore, then we want to do app run. We're going to run this not in debug mode. So debug equals false, which I think is the default. Uh, the reason for that is because otherwise we're going to run into issues with the scheduler. So you want to run this in debug equals false so that the reload doesn't load the scheduler twice. Um, but we're going to do app run. Let's say the host is going to be equal to 0, 0, 0, 0. And that is our application. So I can run this now. I can open it up in the browser. And you're going to see that we have our simple application where I can click back and forth. Now let's create a second file, which I'm gonna call here utils.py. And this file will just uh, contain functions that lock the CPU usage, the RAM usage, and also a function that just prints hello world um, or some message onto the screen. Uh, I just wanna have the functionality here. So I'm gonna say import psutil import daytime as dt and then I'm going to create a function lock RAM usage and this lock RAM usage function will just open up a file the file will be the lock RAM dot txt 
we're going to open this in a pending plus mode. So also creating an appending as F and then I'm going to say F right. When this function is called, what we want to do is we want to say RAM usage. And then I'm going to say PS util. Or actually, let's first of all, add the date. The date is going to be DT date time. Now this is going to be the timestamp, then I'm going to use a colon and I'm going to say PS util dot virtual memory dot percent. And I'm going to also add a percentage symbol here. Uh, and I also want to have a backslash n, so a line break. And that is the function I can now copy this and I can create a second function here, which I'm going to call lock CPU usage. And here I'm just going to change the name of this file to lock CPU, I'm going to say CPU usage here. And I'm going to say PSU till uh, CPU percent. Come on, CPU percent. We don't need this then. And then finally, I'm going to have a third function, this is going to be a simple one print message, it's going to take message as a parameter, and then it's just going to print a message and a message. So these are three very simple functions, which we want to run on a regular basis for whatever reason. These of course, would then be your updating functions or your backup functions, whatever you want to run on a regular basis. And what we want to do now is we want to configure the scheduler. So first of all, I'm going to import from flask AP scheduler import AP scheduler. And also I want to say from utils, I want to import my lock CPU usage, lock RAM usage and print message functions. And then after I define the app, I'm going to say scheduler is equal to AP scheduler like this. And in my main section here, what I want to do is I want to actually add the jobs and start the scheduler. So I'm going to say here, scheduler at job. And first of all, I want to pass the function, let's say, we want to do first of all, the CPU usage, let me just adjust my chair, otherwise, it's, it keeps making noises. Um, lock CPU usage here. So this is the function that we want to schedule to be run on a regular basis. The trigger for that is going to be an interval. And the interval itself will be, let's say five seconds. So every five seconds, we're going to run this job. And then I can also provide an ID. Let's call this one CPU job. And then I can copy that I can change this to lock RAM usage, we don't call the function, we just pass it. Same again, trigger is interval, let's do this time every 10 seconds. And this will have the ID RAM job. And finally, we're going to have the job um, print message. Now, if you want to pass arguments, what you do is you pass an arguments tuple. So you say arcs equals, and then we can pass here my message. Don't forget the comma to make it a tuple. Trigger again will be equal to interval seconds. Let's do it every two seconds. And let's call this uh, message job. There you go. So these are the three jobs. And all we need to do now to actually schedule them is we need to say scheduler start. And that will execute our jobs uh, on a regular basis. So I can run the application again, I can still use it. But I don't need to use it. This is the good thing. I don't need to do anything The jobs are being executed. You can see every two seconds, I get my message here, which of course can be annoying. So you don't want to do this probably. But you can also see that after a while, I should be able doesn't it show it here? Yeah, okay, it doesn't show it in uh, PyCharm right now. But I do have my lock CPU file. And I do have my lock RAM file. Uh, you can see that the content in the lock RAM file is less than in the CPU file, because of course, this is being run every five seconds, this every 10 seconds. But you can see that this is happening constantly. So whether I use the application or not, it doesn't really matter, I can also use the application, nothing will change here. It just keeps doing what it's supposed to do on a regular basis here. Now, what is probably interesting is how do I stop this? Let's say, for example, I want to keep those running forever, but I want to be able to interrupt this job, I want to stop this job, if it gets too annoying. What I can do is on a certain endpoint, I can just say, scheduler dot remove job, and I can pass the ID, for example, message job, which is the ID that we provided for this job here. So when I do that, when I visit the other page, this job will be removed from the scheduler. So I can 
uh, just let it run here. You can see my uh, message, my message. I can also run the application. I can also go into the application. It still continues to print my message. But if I navigate to other, that line of code is being executed here. And you can see that I get no more messages. However, the other two jobs still continue to be executed. They still track the CPU usage and the RAM usage. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting the like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.